Thank the Lord that your hands can move. Your eyes can still see. Your ears can hear. You are not fed through a tube. You can put food in that mouth. You are standing. You are not being carried or rolled. Give him praise with thanksgiving for the many, the Bible says, he daily loads us with benefits. When pastor was preaching about the promises of God, you know, I thought in my heart, I said, God did not just write his promises. He has uttered them. And the words that have come out of his mouth, they shall never return to him unfulfilled. Give him praise that his promises are yes and an amen in your life. The Bible says, though it tarries, I will wait for it. Receive the strength to wait on the Lord. The Bible says, them that wait upon him shall find renewal for their strength. There shall be an exchange of their infirmities for the strength of God. That is the way to claim the promise. You don't give up. You have a confident assurance in the Lord whose word cannot be broken. The Bible said, as he said it, will it not be done? As he promised it, will it not fulfill it? Lift your hands to him and receive from the Lord this morning. Tell him to shorten the time of your waiting. That is one request you can make. Let me not remain on this mountain of waiting for too long, O oh God. Send help from Zion unto me. Quicken me. Release angels on my behalf. Let them minister to me those things that accelerate the fulfillment of my promises. Push me into the possession place of my promise, O oh God. Help me to come back into this house with gladness and rejoicing. To give you praise, to give you thanks for promises fulfilled. Expectations performed in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. And if you are here and you feel tired of waiting, I want you to lift up your hands with me. The Spirit wants me to pray with you. You are tired. You have waited on that promise. You have been diligent. You have been faithful. God arises. The Bible says the book of remembrance was brought. Father, let our books of remembrance be brought. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that our waiting days come to an end in Jesus' name. The promises long waited for in days not too far be performed in the name of Jesus. And in faith and with thanksgiving, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. As Pastor was preaching, the Lord reminded me of what he said in Genesis 2 verse 17. He said, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. That in the day that thou shalt eat it, what did he say will happen? What did he say will happen? He said, you will die. And he said to me, do you know that death comes from the knowledge of good and evil? In our natural reaction every day, we are trying to analyze what is good, amen, and what is bad. So what God is saying, that type of lifestyle, hmm? Is what we kill. And what is the solution? The solution is it. No. Don't worry about what is good or what is bad. Worry about the things that are of life. Amen? The things that are of God. The things that are godly. The things that are in the world. The things that are written. Don't you worry. The Bible says a man of the spirit is a judge of all things. Because the worry about good and evil defeats us. When we fail, we feel what? Dejected. We feel sad. Our conscience is seared and it's, and it's like we are not up to it. God said, no. Focus on life. Amen? Focus on life. And that life, what is that life? That's what we are going to ask God to give you this morning. In John 17 verse 3, the Bible says, 
Jesus, not the Bible, Jesus himself said, this is eternal life that they may know you, God Almighty, and Jesus the Christ that you have sent. The knowledge of God is the key to everything in this world. Amen? If you know the Lord, the Bible says, those that know their God shall be what? Shall be strong. No matter what comes. Because as you look at this world, these present days, <laughs> things may probably get worse. Amen? Everything is confused, not just here, all over the world. Ukraine, Russia is confused. I was in Schiphol Airport last week. The whole place is like a rowdy market. Crazy place. People have missed their flight for days. There's confusion everywhere. So how do we survive? We have to hold on to eternal life. Amen? We have to look on to Jesus in these days and in this time. So I want you to close your eyes and, you know, call on the Lord. Zoe is the life of God. It comes by divine knowledge of God Almighty in His faithfulness of His promises and His words that are eternal that cannot fail. And it comes by the knowledge of Christ, the, the, the vehicle by which this life is dispensed. Without Christ, you can't access that life of God. If you have Christ, you have the life of God. So ask him, increase the quantum of your life in me, O oh God. The Bible says, as the father had life, he gave his son, Jesus Christ. And in same, that same manner, let God put a deposit of his life into you this morning. The Bible says that your eyes of the understanding may be opened in the knowledge of him. So that you can know him. You will, not be, you will not know situations or circumstances. You will not be tossed around by, oh, no. They, oh, they said the Naira is crashing. Oh, they said, it. no, 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 no. They said there's going to be, it's not your business. Focus on the Lord. Put your hands and your heart onto the Lord this morning and cry out to him. It's a very important prayer you pray this morning. It will answer so many things in your life. It will take you from the place of confusion, despondency, and it will usher you into the place of dominion. The Bible says God has not appointed us for wrath or to wrath. No. His plans for us are good and not evil so that he may bring us to an expected end. That expected end is hidden Christ in God. It says our lives are hidden in Christ in God. And the key is eternal life. That you may know him and the power of his resurrection. That no matter what comes, the knowledge of God becomes that power that judges that situation or that thing in the name of Jesus. So command that grace. That is why he made you. The Bible says earnestly he sealed you with the spirit of his life. So that that can quicken you in situations that want to destroy you. People will wonder what is this. Says when people come to you and ask you what is the confidence and the energy by which you make progress. Then you can point them unto the Lord. That the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my shield. The Lord is my buckler. The Lord it is him who causes my hands to war. My fingers to fire. By my God I run through troops. I jump over walls. And by him, he says, my hands are made so strong that bows of steel, they are broken. Ordinary hands, breaking bows of steel. That's the possibility you have this morning. Eternal Father, these are the plans you have for us. That those who will know you shall become strong as you are strong. And that through their lives, which is our lives, for we have come to know you. Help us that we would increase in this knowledge. And as this life is manifest through us, we will engage our world with it. And we will live lives of dominion, lives of exploits. We will live above the circumstances of the world that when they say there is a casting down, we, by your grace and the workings of your life in us, we will say there is a lifting up. Father, we thank you. For these words are sealed with the blood of the Lamb. And they are answered by him who is the yes and the man. And we give you praise for your transformational power. 
that will walk through our lives and take us into your promises. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray.